My name's Jennifer, a 32-year-old working professional. My husband, Donnie, is a 30-year-old employee, and we tied the knot two years ago. Well, he might come off as somewhat unreliable, he's a gentle soul who's perfectly capable of handling housework. I'm a driven working woman, gaining satisfaction from my work and the results I achieve. I work in the New York metropolitan area, a meritocratic environment where hard work is rewarded. However, there are possible relocations and no precedent for maternity or parental leave. Female employees tend to resign upon getting married or having children. I, too, preferred work over housework and initially had no intentions of getting married. When Donnie proposed to me, saying he wished to marry me, I turned him down, stating, I like my current job. I'm a section chief now, but I want to aim higher. I can't imagine settling down or having kids. Yet, Donnie understood me, promising that we would share housework and wouldn't have kids. Eventually, I gave in to his understanding nature and agreed to get married. We both work, so sometimes we don't exactly split the chores as planned, but we help each other out, and I think we manage pretty well. We've had our share of annoying comments from my in-laws like, Prioritize your home over your work. Or, Aren't you going to have kids? But it's not too troublesome since Donnie always stands up for me. Living with Donnie has been a pleasant experience, and I've come to appreciate the beauty of married life. Then one day, I was called by my supervisor, the department manager, for a potential transfer to a branch office. He asked, What do you think? The place of work would be a regional branch, but you'll be called back to headquarters after two years. You'll be a section chief at the transfer location, and if you keep up the good work, promotion is guaranteed upon your return. You could even become the first female department head. Not a bad offer, is it? It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that acceptance or rejection of this transfer determines if one is on the promotion track in my company. Everyone who's progressed to department manager or beyond has experienced a transfer. If refused, one would remain a section chief, with demotion or transfer to an irrelevant position being a possibility. Before marriage, I would have grabbed this opportunity without hesitation. But now, as a married woman, I felt restrained. I told my department manager, Thank you for considering me. I personally would like to consider this positively. However, since this involves a transfer, I would like to discuss it with my husband. Could I get back to you after that? He responded, Oh, right, you're married. You can choose between going alone or moving with your family. Discuss it properly. I'll be expecting a positive answer. Upon returning home, I discussed this with Donnie. I've been offered a transfer. I might have to go to the countryside, but if I work hard for two years, I can return here. If I continue to perform well, I can get promoted. I want to accept this offer if you're okay with it, Donnie. We can either move together or I can go alone. What do you prefer? Donnie seemed surprised at first, but after some thought, he responded. Your dream can come true if you accept this transfer, right, Jennifer? I can't move with you because I have work here, but don't worry about me and go for it. With Donnie's encouragement, I informed the company that I would be moving alone for the transfer, and I began negotiating terms and conditions. As a result, the company agreed to cover my relocation expenses. Factors such as being treated as on duty during commute days when returning home from my remote work location, and an overall decent benefits package, convinced me to accept the transfer to the branch office. Then I officially received the transfer order and decided to relocate to the countryside. It seemed I could rent a company apartment at a low price, so that's where I decided to live. On the day of the move, the movers had already transported my stuff, and my husband came to see me off at the station. Thanks for seeing me off. I'll be in touch regularly and will try to come home as often as possible. Yeah, I'll be waiting. Just because you're working remotely, don't go overboard. You too. It's about time. Take care. Okay, I'm off. And thus my life as a remote employee began. I planned to return home during long holidays and slower weeks, but unexpectedly, trouble arose at the branch office right after my transfer. I can't work under a woman. I can't trust someone who just came out of nowhere. I hit a local barrier as the employees wouldn't acknowledge me. I was the subject of baseless rumors. My instructions were not followed, and even my phone calls were not transferred. During such times, a serious mistake occurred in a project that a subordinate had been advancing, deliberately excluding me. 
The subordinate in charge was pale with shock. Of course, as his supervisor, this was my responsibility. I was caught up dealing with the problem, apologizing, not just recovering the lost ground, but also needing to improve relations with the subordinates. My supervisor, seeing my plight, gave me some advice. I've experienced a transfer myself, so I understand your struggle. It may seem unfair, but you can't force your correctness here. It's important to communicate well, understand others, and make connections horizontally. Taking my supervisor's advice, I worked on creating horizontal connections by spending more time with everyone at the branch. I had not joined the neighborhood association, but I learned that the company's rental housing was part of a neighborhood association group, so I joined there too. Before I knew it, I was struggling to find personal time and couldn't make it back to my home where my husband was waiting. I kept in touch with my husband, but after a few months of working remotely, it became difficult to reach him at night, by phone or through text. I'm working late every day because it's tough at work. I was tired and fell asleep. Since my husband said things like that, and I was also busy, I listened without suspecting anything. Focusing more on my work, I continued to immerse myself. One time during a long holiday when work was slow, I decided to return to my home in New York at short notice. However, I couldn't reach my husband by phone or text, so I returned from my remote work location without notice. When I opened the door to my home for the first time after a long time, something felt odd. Then, then, a woman I didn't recognize rushed to the door, saying, Justin, welcome back. If I knew you were coming home early, I would have prepared. The woman and I seeing each other were shocked into silence. Breaking the silence, the woman was the first to speak. May I ask who you are? And who might you be? This is my home. There must be some mistake. I live in this house. After arguing back and forth without resolution, we decided to step outside to check the house number. To my surprise, the nameplate was the custom one I had ordered. The key fits, the nameplate's correct. This is my house. I'm gonna go in. Wait, what do you mean? Stop it. Ignoring the women's protests, I pushed past her and made my way into the house. Once inside, I noticed everything had changed. The curtains, the furniture, all the interiors. There was a framed photo in the living room of my husband and the woman at a theme park. Mugs I had never seen before in the kitchen. Unfamiliar toothbrushes and skin toner in the bathroom and women's shampoo and conditioner in the shower. The bed linen was a design I'd never seen before, and there was nothing of mine left in the wardrobe, just the woman's clothes. My husband's belongings were hidden in a room at the back of the house, as if the woman had moved in and taken over. While I was standing there shocked, I heard the front door open. I'm home. Oh, Lola, did you invite a friend over? Justin, thank God you're back. This woman just barged into our house. The man that the woman had chosen as Justin was unmistakably my husband. Seeing me, my husband was startled. What are you doing here? Johnny, since when did you become Justin? Can you explain what's going on? I confronted my husband. What are you talking about? This is Justin, right, Justin? Well, you see, I mean... Pressed by both of us, my husband was flustered. Lola, this man's real name is Donnie. Isn't that what's written on your driver's license? And I'm Donnie's wife, Jennifer. That's a lie. He said he was divorced. Donnie, you're going to explain everything clearly, right? Jennifer, you hadn't come home much and I was lonely. So I casually signed up for a dating app and met Lola. I see. So Justin is your Elias on the dating app? No, that's not it. I thought it would be a problem if my real name came out, so I used a fake name keeping my last name the same. And why did she lie about being divorced? In Lola's dating app profile, it said, I've only ever attended all girls' schools and have never dated a man before, looking for someone who's willing to be serious about a relationship with the goal of marriage. That really tugged at my heartstrings, so I lied about being divorced to woo Lola, hinting at marriage, and we started living together. Huh? Why would you do something like that? At that point, my husband defiantly started to justify his actions. It's your fault for always being away for work. It's natural for a man to desire a woman. We've been leading separate lives because of your business assignment and the overtime and weekend work. I just wanted a warm home where my wife would be waiting for me with dinner ready when I come home. 
I was shocked at this confession, as I had always thought of my husband as understanding towards my work. But that doesn't make what you did right. What you did is the lowest of the low. If you wanted to be with another woman, you should have divorced me first. Why didn't you do the right thing? I loved you both. I never planned on leaving either of you. After all you've done, it was obvious I would find out when I came back. It's unbelievable that you thought you could hide and deceive me. What? It's your fault for breaking your promise and not coming back here. If you'd just come back, I wouldn't have even thought about cheating. What the heck? I've explained to you that work has been really tough and I couldn't help it. Our argument devolved into a shouting match, while the woman my husband was cheating with stood there, pale as a ghost. The other woman realized she'd been deceived by a married man and dragged into his childish game. So it was all a lie. You've made a fool of me. I'm leaving right now. Lola, wait. It's not what you think. My husband tried to stop the other woman, who was packing her things and about to leave. But his attempt was brushed off. Don't touch me with your filthy hands. I can't believe a single word you say. Cursing my husband, the other woman left for her parents' home. I decided to punish my husband for this, gathering as much evidence as I could and bringing it back with me. Once I returned to my work assignment, the first thing I did was hire a detective to investigate my husband's mistress. The investigation revealed the woman was the daughter of an executive at my husband's business partner. I had a lawyer send documents proving the affair to both my husband's home and the other woman's parents. Upon receiving the documents, my husband protested, saying he didn't want a divorce. So, I prepared myself for a long battle, even considering taking the matter to court. The other woman's family contacted my lawyer, and we decided to meet at their office. The other woman and her parents showed up and apologized to me. We're so sorry. Even though we didn't know about it, our daughters caused you so much trouble. Our daughter is very serious and sheltered, so she's naive about the world. We're trying to arrange a marriage for her with someone we approve of, but she longed for a freer love. She met your husband without us knowing and got carried away without really knowing who he was. She said she met a divorced man on a dating app and wanted to move in with him. We told her to stop seeing this man, but she didn't listen. She was so caught up in her fantasies, she ran away from home to be with him. Our daughter was shocked to learn she was the other woman, and blames herself. She's now attending therapy. We're willing to pay you a settlement of $50,000 and we ask that you keep this matter to yourself. The other woman and her parents shook hands with me firmly. I understand your feelings. I will accept your apology on one condition. I'm preparing for a divorce, but my husband refuses to agree. If you're willing to cooperate when it comes to providing testimony if this goes to trial, I'll agree to the settlement. Okay, we'll cooperate, but our daughter is young and we don't want a permanent record if this goes to court. Is there any other way we could assist you in punishing him? Luckily or unluckily, his workplace is our client. So, in an unexpected twist, the women my husband cheated with and I joined forces. We conspired to teach him a lesson. His workplace would soon face a blow because he'd angered an executive at one of their client companies. This mess, of course, would be pinned solely on my husband. Back home, his parents, oblivious to the turmoil, were trying to reach out to him as they always did. Jennifer is not answering our calls and she won't return them either. Is she so engrossed in work that she forgot about us? When is she coming back? We miss seeing our grandchild. Mom, you don't understand. I cheated on Jennifer while she was on her assignment and now it looks like we're heading for a divorce. His mother responded. That woman who neglects Donnie to focus on her job is to blame. Maybe it's better if you break up with Jennifer and get back together with the woman you had an affair with. Apparently, my in-laws figured that the other woman's family seemed wealthier than ours. So, they sided with my husband and his lover, launching a barrage of attacks against me. They repeatedly called me, but I blocked their calls. They started calling me at work. When I refused to speak to them, they came to my workplace, creating a scene and causing a ruckus. Please let go of our son. It's because you're such a woman that our son had an affair. He'd be happier with his lover, so stop getting in his way. And I said, What on earth are you talking about? I want to divorce Donnie. He's the one who's refusing. Besides, the woman he cheated with has no intention of getting back with him. After all, he tricked the daughter of a business executive into dating him. They're pretty angry. It's going to be a lot of trouble. 
The moment they realized their son had angered a major client, my in-laws suddenly switched sides and tried to cozy up to me. Oh no, we didn't know it had come to this. We must have misunderstood. We're sorry. Our son is a fool, but he's remorseful. You'll forgive him, won't you, Jennifer? I must decline. You just finished berating me. And now you're asking for my forgiveness? Please leave. They refused to leave, so I had them escorted out by security. Since they had caused a commotion, my company decided to sue them for business obstruction. After all that, I finally received my compensation from my husband and got my divorce. The other woman's family also demanded compensation for violation of her chastity and her psychiatric treatment costs. With the loss of his standing at the company due to his mistakes and having to pay hefty compensations, my husband was now drowning in debt. He couldn't afford to quit and he was cornered. Two years had passed since my assignment started when everything finally settled down. I finished my assignment successfully and was getting ready to return to the main office. My hard work had paid off and I had been promoted to the position of department manager. Had I not taken the assignment, I might still be living in a loveless marriage. But I guess a man like him would have had an affair sooner or later and I would have clashed with his parents. I've realized that I really am better suited for work than family life, and I'm incredibly fulfilled and happy now.